Today, we're diving into a project that's reshaping global trade routes. Have you ever wondered what lies beneath the icy surface of the Arctic Ocean and how it could revolutionize international commerce? Well, you're in the right place to find out. Imagine a hidden world under the Arctic ice, coming to life as the ice melts away. This isn't just about a change in the landscape, it's about uncovering a new passage that could link continents and transform the way we think about shipping and trade. In this video, we're taking you on a journey to the Arctic Silk Road, where ambitious projects are unfolding in one of the most extreme environments on Earth. We'll explore how Russia is leading the charge in this new frontier, building an infrastructure that could alter global trade dynamics. But this story isn't without its challenges and controversies. How does building in such a harsh environment impact the fragile Arctic ecosystem? And what does this mean for international politics and the future of global trade? Stay tuned as we uncover the layers of this complex and captivating project. The Arctic is more than a mere geographic region. It's a complex system encompassing physical, biological, chemical and climatological elements. Defined by the area north of the Arctic Circle, this region is predominantly an ocean surrounded by land. Sea ice forms in autumn and winter, melting in spring and summer, while snow accumulates and retreats on both land and ice. As we move north, the exposed tundra transforms with seasonal snow, eventually transitioning to forest further south. Despite its apparent isolation, the Arctic's climate significantly influences global weather patterns. The cold conditions in the Arctic and Antarctic contribute crucially to worldwide atmospheric and oceanic circulation. This interconnectedness means that weather events like heat waves, cold snaps, storms, floods and droughts in lower latitudes are strongly influenced by Arctic dynamics. At the same time, the Arctic's unique location and configuration give rise to phenomena rarely observed elsewhere. Constructing in the Arctic presents a lot of formidable challenges that demand innovative solutions. The unwelcoming cold and icy conditions create a hostile environment, posing significant hurdles to construction projects. The extreme temperatures not only complicate the construction process, but also necessitate specialized materials and techniques to ensure structural integrity. The Arctic's remote location further worsens the difficulties. Accessing the area with essential supplies and skilled workers becomes a logistical puzzle. Transportation becomes a significant bottleneck, with icy and treacherous terrain impeding the movement of construction equipment and personnel. This remoteness often requires careful planning and coordination to overcome the isolation and ensure the timely delivery of resources. Moreover, the Arctic environment is notorious for its unpredictability. Frequent storms, blizzards and other extreme weather conditions can halt construction activities, leading to project delays. Adapting to these environmental challenges involves implementing resilient designs, incorporating cutting-edge technology and adhering to stringent safety protocols to safeguard both the construction process and the well-being of workers. This icy expanse has become a focal point for competing territorial claims and international interests. Nations such as Russia, Canada, the United States, Denmark and Norway have asserted their sovereignty over parts of the Arctic, driven by the desire to access untapped resources and strategic maritime routes. These claims have intensified as melting ice opens up new possibilities for navigation and resource extraction. Amidst these territorial disputes, the Arctic holds significant potential for enhancing global trade along the historic Silk Road. The melting ice has made the northern sea route more navigable, reducing shipping distances between Europe and Asia. This presents an opportunity to activate the ancient trade routes, fostering economic connectivity and facilitating the movement of goods. The Arctic's emerging role in global trade aligns with the Silk Road's historical significance as a conduit for cultural exchange and commerce. Resource extraction in the Arctic, particularly in terms of oil, gas and minerals, has also become an important point for economic development. The region is estimated to hold substantial reserves, attracting investment and exploration activities. This has attracted investment from around the world, including from Russia. As nations compete for access to these resources, the race to develop the Arctic Silk Road is heating up. 
What will this mean for global politics and economics? And what does it mean for the environment? The Tamer Peninsula's $110 billion megaport is a remarkable feat in Russian construction, currently marked as the largest project in the global oil industry. Housing the country's largest Arctic oil terminal, the project necessitates the creation of new highways, two airports, 15 villages, and multiple electricity plants to support the 400,000 workers required for its realization. Transporting over 18,000 tons of heavy machinery, living quarters and communications equipment to the remote site is just the beginning. A 770-kilometer pipeline is concurrently under construction to transport oil to the port, from where 10 new ice-class tankers will further transport it to Europe and Asia. Once operational, the megaport is projected to deliver 25 million tons of oil by 2025 and an impressive 100 million tons by 2030. While the undertaking involves significant costs, the anticipated profits far outweigh them. Notably, this megaport is just one facet of a broader development initiative in the region. Russia's interest in the Arctic has deep roots, with notable events such as the 2007 planting of a flag at the North Pole and the 2018 announcement of the Northern Sea Route Development Plan. This plan aims to boost Russian economic development along the Northern Sea Route, presenting an alternative to the Suez Canal for cargo shipping between Europe and Asia. By 2035, Russia aims to increase cargo flow through the region by at least 72 million tonnes. Already making strides, the traffic through the area increased by 80% in 2018, reaching 16 million tonnes, and further rose to 23 million tonnes in 2019. Investments in Russian Arctic infrastructure extend beyond oil, encompassing modernization of ports, construction of ice-class container ships, and expansion of railways. The strategic vision aims to tap into the vast potential of the Arctic, positioning it as a key player in global trade routes. Russian state-owned energy firm Rosatom, in collaboration with UAE-based DP World, is strategically developing new ports to leverage the region's evolving economic dynamics. Sebeta, located on the Yamal Peninsula in Russia, serves as a vital liquefied natural gas LNG export terminal, capitalizing on the northern sea route's opening due to melting ice. Its significance lies in facilitating energy trade between Europe and Asia. Dudinka, situated on the Yenisei River, plays a pivotal role in the transportation of goods from Russia's interior to the Arctic coast. As an ice-free port, it supports the movement of diverse commodities and enhances connectivity within the Arctic region. Murmansk, positioned near the border with Norway, serves as a key hub for maritime activities. Its ice-free waters are crucial for year-round shipping, making it an essential link for the Arctic Silk Road. Moreover, Murmansk's strategic location allows it to connect with European markets, further amplifying its importance. Kirkenes, located in Norway, acts as a gateway connecting the Arctic Silk Road with European infrastructure. Its ice-free port and proximity to the Barents Sea make it an attractive transshipment point, fostering trade between the Arctic region and global markets. These ports collectively form a dynamic network, enhancing the Arctic Silk Road's logistical capabilities and fostering economic cooperation in the rapidly changing Arctic landscape. Aside from the ports, the existing northern latitudinal and trans-Siberian railways serve as vital land routes in the Arctic region. The northern latitudinal railway connects Russia's western and eastern Arctic regions, enhancing connectivity and resource transport. The trans-Siberian railway, stretching across Russia, facilitates trade between Europe and Asia. The proposal of a potential Polar Silk Road railway connection as part of the project would involve extending these railways into the Arctic, creating a strategic overland route linking Europe and Asia via the Arctic Circle. This ambitious railway connection could unlock new economic opportunities, expedite cargo transit and bolster regional development. However, such a project would require overcoming significant engineering and environmental challenges, including permafrost conditions. This effort has attracted interest beyond the UAE, as South Korea and China are also keen on investing in Russia's infrastructure and establishing new ports and trade routes. In 2018, China announced its cooperation with Russia on an Arctic Silk Road, committing to significant investments, including the construction of Chinese docks in underdeveloped Russian ports.
To support this initiative, China is building railways, such as a 500-kilometer line linking Perm in the Ural Mountains to several northern port cities. Additionally, Russia has installed an $889 million fiber, known as the Polar Express, spanning 12,600 kilometers from Tereburka to Vladivostok, enhancing internet and phone connectivity for approximately 12.5 million residents in Russia's far north. Civilian airports, including Amdurma in the west and Pivik, Chersky and Kapovem in the east, are also undergoing significant upgrades. The completion of dredging in the Gulf of Ob in 2022 has opened up this strategic location, allowing larger ships to navigate through. Russia is ramping up its shipbuilding efforts with plans to construct a fleet of over 40 Arctic vessels, including eight nuclear-powered icebreakers and 16 rescue and support ships. Notably, some of these vessels will be leader-class icebreakers, capable of breaking through thick Arctic ice to create pathways for commercial ships. However, these developments have raised concerns among other nations, particularly the United States, which emphasizes that the Northern Sea Route and the Northwest Passage serve as straits for international navigation and are not solely under Russia's control, despite a considerable portion falling within the country's exclusive economic zone. Russia heavily relies on foreign investment to finance its new infrastructure projects, particularly seeking support from nations eager for an alternative to the Suez Canal. Despite the assurance of environmentally friendly oil megaports powered by wind turbines, environmental groups oppose these ventures, especially considering their location within a protected nature reserve, risking harm to Arctic wildlife. The Kremlin, historically sluggish in addressing climate change, downplays its severity despite domestic political implications. As the world's fourth largest greenhouse gas emitter, Russia is committed to achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2060, yet hesitates on phasing out coal and methane emissions in the next decade. Demonstrating technological prowess in the Arctic, Russia has developed floating nuclear power plants resilient to extreme weather, catering to remote areas. The academic Lomonosov is one such plant. With a substantial length of 144 meters and a width of 30 meters, this innovative structure boasts a displacement of 21,500 tons and accommodates a crew of 69 individuals. However, some sources, including the New York Times, suggest a larger crew of about 300 people. Powered by two KLT-40S reactors derived from icebreaker propulsion systems, the academic Lomonosov generates an impressive thermal reactor power of 300 megawatts. This substantial energy is further transformed into 70 megawatts of electricity through two turbo-generating sets. Notably, the reactors utilize low-enriched uranium, LEU fuel, featuring an average enrichment of 14.1% with a fuel cycle lasting three years. Beyond electricity generation, the versatility of the academic Lomonosov is apparent in its cogeneration capabilities. The plant efficiently captures waste heat, delivering up to 60 megawatts of thermal power for heating purposes. Additionally, it can provide a peak heat delivery of up to 170 megawatts while simultaneously reducing electric output to 30 megawatts. Moreover, the facility contributes to freshwater production, generating up to 240,000 cubic meters per day from seawater. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, constructing in the Arctic comes with a lot of challenges, with climate change being a paramount concern. Melting ice presents opportunities and risks, requiring a focus on sustainable development. Environmental concerns arise, emphasizing responsible resource extraction to preserve the delicate Arctic ecosystem. Balancing economic interests and ecological preservation is crucial. Geopolitical tensions add complexity, as the Arctic's strategic significance may lead to competition and conflict among nations. To ensure the success of the Arctic Silk Road project, balancing geopolitical interests and fostering international cooperation is essential to prevent it from becoming a source of contention. Then, the economic viability is at the core of the project's success. Analyzing factors such as shipping costs, resource potential and evolving trade patterns is essential. The story of the Arctic Silk Road is only just beginning. As the ice melts and access to the region becomes easier, 
the potential economic and political implications are huge. What do you think about this project? Is it a worthwhile endeavor? Share your thoughts and make sure you are subscribed to this channel for more updates.